Everyone, welcome to Burwood today, and I'm so glad to be here with Anthony Albanese, the leader of the Labor Party. He has been here multiple times, and he is a genuine leader who understands the concerns of voters in this seat. So, thank you so much for coming again, Anthony. Thanks very much, Sally, and I'm here today joined by my colleagues, Chris Bowen and Jason Clare. And uh, we've just been through a week of Parliament. Uh, that uh, best case scenario, I think, for the government is that it was chaotic. That's the best thing that you can say about it. There are now just seven sitting days left of the House of Representatives and two of the Senate. But of those seven days, I don't know what we're going to be doing next week because the government had its, as its priority this week uh, the Religious Discrimination Bill, which passed the House of Representatives, amended so that people weren't suffered from uh, more discrimination as a result of removing religious discrimination, and then they removed the bill. The amendment was perfectly consistent with what Scott Morrison wrote to me last year and what he declared he would do, which is to remove any possibility of discrimination against uh, students because of who they are. And yet, the withdrawal of that legislation, the uh, he said, he said, she said, she said, he said, chaos, that's there in the Liberal Party, about who said what to whom in the Prime Minister's office uh, late at night uh, when the Prime Minister was trying to pressure people into voting against their own values and against what he himself has said. Now we have a circumstance whereby we have someone like Warren Ench, the great pretender, uh, saying he'd stand up for rights of students, uh, walking away from it. Goodness knows what deal was done there. What we know is this government are out of puff, out of ideas and out of time. They have no agenda next week for the parliament. They have no significant legislative program going forward. Now, at the end of the third term, if you have no reason for being in existence, then why would you expect the Australian people to give you a fourth term and a second decade in office? It is time that this government was put out of its misery. They don't like each other, and the problem with that is, isn't just that fact that they call each other's names, including the Pro Prime Minister being called a hypocrite and a liar by the Deputy Prime Minister, the problem is that they are paralysed by inaction because of their disunity, their dysfunction and their dishonesty. At the same time, Australia and the globe face real challenges. And I do want to make some comments about the threats that are made to Ukraine. I met yesterday uh, with the Federation of Ukrainian Organisation Leadership in Melbourne. They're concerned about uh, their former country. As loyal Australians, they still look to their heritage and the country in which they have uh, relatives and friends. And they're concerned about, frankly, the intimidation and threats that are being made by Russia through Vladimir Putin. Labor's position is very clear. There is no place for any attacks on a sovereign nation like the Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine deserves to be able to make its own decisions. And the idea uh, that these threats and intimidation, threats of war, uh, should be withdrawn, the intimidation should stop, and Russia should just back off. And Australia needs to be a part of that global message by democratic countries to Russia. Happy to take questions. Well, we'll see how we go. Uh, we've got good candidates uh, in these seats. Uh, I'm here today uh, handing out for Jason Yatsen Lee. Uh, he will make a major contribution to the New South Wales Parliament if he's successful today. But of course, he, he follows a very popular uh, local member in uh, Jody McKay, a former leader of the Labor Party. Uh, so that will make it tough. Uh, but uh, we're hopeful of, of a good outcome. Uh, for the state by-elections, not just here in Strathfield, but of course in, in Bega and Monero. We're also running uh, Labor candidates. Uh, I wish that uh, the Prime Minister 
would, uh, given he has said that he's been campaigning since October and not governing, and it's obvious to all that he's not governing, there is no legislation went through the parliament uh, last week that didn't get defeated or get changed uh, or, or that the government itself didn't withdraw. Uh, so he should call an election. I'd be, I'd be happy to be handing out here, handing out for Sally, who's our fantastic candidate for Reid, uh, because I think the Australian people uh, have had enough and they should get the right to decide uh, who actually governs taking us forward with an agenda for secure work, with an agenda for a future made in Australia, an agenda to lift living standards, including lifting wages. This government have no strategy, no plan for today, let alone a plan for tomorrow. We'll commit to the positions that we took this week. We don't believe anyone should be discriminated against because of who they are, whether that's people of faith or whether that be people uh, who are students, uh, be they uh, gay or lesbian or transgender, uh, going through uh, gender issues. Uh, we believe that no child uh, deserves to be discriminated against because of who they are. And that's consistent with what the Prime Minister wrote to me uh, last year, saying that was his position. They put it out on the front page of newspapers and then walked away from it. It just shows they can't be trusted. I'll tell you the other thing we're committed to is all of the amendments that we put forward, which include anti-vilification provisions. How is it that a, a Muslim woman uh, can be vilified for wearing a hijab or a Sikh man uh, because of the fact they're easily identifiable? Uh, we, need, we need strong uh, provisions which prevent discrimination against all people uh, whether it be on the basis of gender or age or race or faith or sexuality, we need a, a position whereby we promote harmony and diversity. Our diversity is this country's strength. In a seat like this, I look around here, it's a very diverse community. Uh, some of the Stratford electorate is in my own, uh, in Grainler, and uh, I'm very proud to represent uh, this community. What the Prime Minister has to understand, uh, explain is why has he pulled a bill that is now consistent with what he said was his objective? Uh, it just was all about wedging and playing politics and that's the problem with this Prime Minister. There's never any values, there's never any principle, it's just all about the politics, all about the game. And that's why he ends up uh, wedging himself like he did uh, last Thursday morning. So what else needs the Labor government bring back an amended religious discrimination bill as opposed to a changing the sex discrimination bill? Well, we'll have... Uh, we're not in government yet. We're not getting ahead of ourselves. What, off, what I've done... Oh, I'm, I'm pleased that you're declaring the election <laughs> over. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take that as... I'll take that as a very... Uh, I outlined what our policy was. I outline what our policy was very clearly, the principles that will be embodied uh, and the principles that we will take forward. And what's more, the principles that we will actually legislate for and do and achieve in government. We will consult properly as well. The truth is that we were given less than 24 hours between when the, uh, the, the government adopted its final position on Tuesday afternoon and began debate again on this legislation an hour later. There are groups, including faith communities, such as the Hindu Council, who had major concerns with this legislation, who are faith-based groups, and they were contacting us as well, expressing concern about the weaknesses, the concerns that were there and expressed by disability groups, the concerns that were there from the Council of the Ageing. Now, we did our best to draft amendments on short notice uh, to improve the bill. And some of those amendments uh, were, were, were carried uh, in partnership with the crossbenchers and with members of uh, the Prime Minister's own party. 
that just shows how, uh, how flawed uh, the legislation was, but it also showed how bad the process was. What we will have is a proper po consultation process, and we want policy that unites the nation, not divides it. And the problem for this Prime Minister is he's always seeking to divide the country, not bring it together so that we can go forward, particularly post the pandemic, to build a better future for all, for all in this country. There were protests outside your office yesterday and there's Not protests worthy. again today on this matter. Um, if you aren't happy with how they just managed it, what would you say to those I wasn't aware of the protests, so it wasn't very successful. They, they usually are. Um, you know, they usually are. Uh, I, I, I say there's probably a good idea to let someone know that, that that's happening, but thank you for informing me. Um, we took a, a clear view that I'm very proud of. We took a view that people of faith deserve to be protected from discrimination. We also took a view that you can achieve that without adding to the discrimination or removing protections from others. Did you seek legal advice about the wording of your apology to the Legal advice? Legal advice? I, uh, my, my office may well have. It was, uh, I, I don't think it was even scripted in terms of the, the, the wording in the parliament. Uh, she deserves uh, an apology. Uh, I note that the Prime Minister apologised also. Uh, I've consistently uh, spoken with Brittany. Uh, I think that uh, she is someone who is very brave, is very uh, strong, and I was very proud to hear her and Grace Tame at the National Press Club, an opportunity for us to listen. There is nothing that I said uh, that could possibly have done that. I think they're referring to the remarks of someone else who said something very different. I was very conscious of the legal case, which is why uh, I worded it carefully uh, in terms of in, in the parliament. I think they're referring to the comments of someone else, uh, someone else uh, who I think uh, you know, has a record on this. Uh, in terms of uh, not being uh, transparent and accountable to these issues. That, oh, that is based upon uh, advice, uh, not just from uh, Australia, but other countries as well, including the United States, and people should follow the advice of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. We have a very professional foreign service. Uh, everyone should always follow their advice on these matters. Well, this is a desperate government. This is a desperate government. And Peter Dutton should look at the comments from the Director General of ASIO, who made it clear uh, how inappropriate uh, the attempted political use of uh, nonsense and rhetoric uh, is. Uh, this is uh, rather pathetic, uh, particularly uh, from a, a government uh, that sat back and watched the Port of Darwin be sold to a company directly connected with the Communist Party of China. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, that they do this. But I expect all sort of desperation. Uh, we had a couple of things uh, happen uh, this week, uh, that sort of nonsense, and then the nonsense about a speech I, I, I might have given uh, in 1991, more than 31 years ago. I await this week my year six uh, modern history uh, essays being discussed in the parliament, perhaps my economics one essays, uh, from Sydney University. Of course, uh, Peter Dutton uh, is, uh, is busy competing with Josh Frydenberg. They're competing against each other. We see it played out on the floor of the parliament. We see Josh Frydenberg speak about how I've never been treasurer. Those comments aren't aimed at me. 
they're aimed at Peter Dutton. And you see Peter Dutton coming out with this nonsense in response. Look, this is a government that's a lesser government than a bin fire. And it's therefore all to see. But I think Chris Bowen might want to comment there as well. Thanks, Anthony. There's a particular responsibility on parties of government to treat intelligence agencies with the utmost respect and a particular responsibility on ministers in national security portfolios. Now, Peter Dutton has said he's based his comments on both open source information and other information. If he has used ASIO briefings and sought to misrepresent them for political purposes, then he is the threat to national security. He is the one who is endangering our national security. We all receive ASIO briefings. The leader receives them in his capacity. Jason and I have received them in the past in our portfolio capacities. Never would it occur to us, never would it occur to us to use an ASIO briefing in any public commentary in any way whatsoever. They are ASIO briefings. Uh, the S in ASIO is the most important part of ASIO. These are sensitive security matters which ministers are briefed on. If Peter Dutton chooses to use briefings and other information and misrepresent them for political purposes, then he should be ashamed of himself. He is the one who has some serious questions to answer. He is the one that is accountable to the parliament for his breach of long-standing convention about how elected members of parliament deal with ASIO. He is the threat to national security. Thanks very much. One more. I'd say go home. Go home. Go home. Don't uh, engage in the sort of behaviour that we've seen. Uh, my understanding is that during the recent period in Canberra, there have been people intimidated uh, for wanting to get vaccinated. Uh, there's been behaviour and harassment and blocking of people's movement. It doesn't advance any cause. It doesn't assist the sort of nonsense that we've seen of people dressed up in military uh, camouflage uh, walking around Canberra. If you think that's a way that you win support for your view uh, in Australia, I think you're very wrong. I think these people uh, need to just go home and think about the facts which are out there. And the facts are that you are far more lo likely to avoid getting COVID if you're fully vaccinated. The fact is, if you do get COVID, you're far less likely to have an acute health uh, concern uh, if you're fully vaccinated. And you're far less likely to uh, suffer uh, death if you're fully vaccinated. Uh, at a time when our nurses, our healthcare professionals are working their guts out under extraordinary pressure in our hospitals, but a particular shout out to those in our aged care facilities. Have some respect for the people who've been working beyond any reasonable uh, uh, criteria, working extended hours under extraordinary pressure to keep their fellow Australians safe and to look after them. Go home.